Hello. Uh, this video is the first doctor's appointment after my surgery where we find out exactly what it is that we're dealing with. Uh, there's a couple uh, notes that I'd like to make. Uh, one is that I, I will be losing my hair and we go over the length of time that chemo is. And so the way he, the doctor in this video describes the chemotherapy is that it's eight weeks, like one, one chemo day a week. And what we're actually doing is chemo three days in a row, 21 days off, three days in a row, 21 days off for four cycles. Uh, resulting in 12 days of chemotherapy and then in that time for seven weeks I will be going to radiation Monday through Friday uh, every day uh, so um, <clears throat> I will be losing my hair because the type of chemo is really intense and uh, the type of cancer that I have is called neuroendocrine tumor, right? How do you say it? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So when you were sitting here on our previous videos saying, I just know it's going to be this. I was fucking right. Oh, girl. <laughs> uh, it's what I have. There are many names for. Uh, it's the same thing that most people get when they have really serious lung cancer. That's not the unusual. The small cell, it's called small cell carcinoma. So typically when it is seen, it's in like stage four lung cancer. So it's in the lungs and, the, and all over the place. What makes mine exponentially more unusual is that it is just in the larynx. So small cell carcinoma of the larynx and then there have been, including myself, 160 people worldwide in the last 30 years. I gotta find that one Looney Tune doctor that was like, it was us, it's this one! He should have bet on that. But anyway, it's what I have. It's pretty fucking serious. If you wanna look up the statistics, I'm not going to. Uh, but this video that you're about to watch is like the first time that we sit down with somebody who is on the team for cancer. So I, oh, up until recently was having a hard time knowing what to ask which doctors when we would go see them because the radiation doctor will not speak to what's going to happen in chemo though they are working in tandem and I responded very very strongly to the part about and I'll say it right now voice box I kept saying vocal box how annoying I, I have a very strong reaction to that in this video but it took a few days a, a week or so for Collier and I both <clears throat> to remember he's a surgeon he's not a medical oncologist that's the person who does chemo and he's not the radiation doctor which I don't think radiologist is the right word for that so <laughs> radiation doctor it is um, it's only now a month in that I'm figuring out which doctors will talk about what and it's a little bit frustrating that there isn't more cohesion but <sighs> enjoy uh, so tell me about your t-shirt. Oh, yes. This is a dashboard confessional t-shirt that I've had since uh, 2002. <laughs> Too close. Eye <laughs> wrinkles. I don't like <laughs> uh, Yes, I've had this shirt since 2002. I love dashboard confessional. Haters. Um... Am I still in the shop? Yeah. It got weird. It feels like it's weird. How funny. Uh, it is up to the side. We are at the oncologist. Oh. So 
Hello, hi. That's it. Hello. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Dr. Ohm, you can most common type. The vast majority of our squamous cell carcinomas. Okay, and those are typically seen in older men who smoke. Right. Okay, and so this one accounts for a tiny fraction of all the different types of, you know, laryngeal sure. cancers. Okay. Um, uh, the unfortunate thing about it is that this tends to be a bit more aggressive than the standard squamous cell carcinomas. Okay. Okay, and so um, uh, historically saying that the prognosis is worse than the typical squamous cell carcinoma. Okay. But how that applies to you, I mean, it's hard to say, okay, because it's not like there's been, you know, we can't draw upon huge numbers historically to make you know, conclusions, okay? So uh, I wouldn't, uh, I'm just telling you that just because that's just the kind of facts historically, but does that apply to you individually? Maybe, maybe not, okay. because again, it's not like, um, uh, you know, it's any time when you, it's all about kind of sample size. Right, you know, anytime, you know, like the common cancer, like you know, breast cancers or you know, prostate cancers or melanoma or other types of cancers where there's so many of them, right? Yeah. You can conclude looking in, you know, the past. Right, right, there's yeah, you, yeah, you, you can, you can kind of help predict the behavior. Yeah. Okay, but this one, there isn't as much because it's much rarer. Okay, mm -hmm. and so um, uh, what data is out there tends to suggest that it is more. But again, you know, does that apply to you? Right, a 32-year-old woman as opposed maybe, to... Maybe, right. maybe, right. maybe, maybe not, okay? And so the other thing that you kind of have going for you is that the initial PET scan shows it hasn't spread to... It's not in any other parts of the body. Cool. Okay, it's just isolated right here, okay? And so um, uh, those are kind of the kind of good news and bad news. You know, bad news is cancer. You know, another bad news is that it's this rarer type of cancer that tends to be more aggressive, but the good news is that we don't see it has spread anywhere else in your body, you know, based on the PET scan. Cool. Okay. So now it comes down to treatment. You know, how is this, you know, treated? Okay. And again, so once again, the um, uh, treatment, it's kind of hard to say which is the best, you know, treatment. Okay. There's two options. One is surgery. Okay, and surgery because of its location, okay, because of its location, would involve removing your voice box. Okay, I don't, I don't think you know. There's, there's partial procedures where we can remove just a portion, you know, of the voice box, but I think because of what this involves, I don't. In in my personal surgical capabilities, I don't think I'll be able to clear the cancer without doing anything so short of removing the entire voice box. The other treatment option, which I think can give just as good you know, potential outcome, is a combination of chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Okay, So that will obviously prevent you, I mean, you know, it would be in, done in place of surgery, okay, yeah. and um, I don't think that, you know, I don't think that there, I don't think surgery will give any better chance of cure than just chemotherapy, radiation therapy. Okay. Okay, but that's just my opinion. Also, okay. you need to know that I have a degree in radio broadcasting and I'm in sales. Uh-huh. I cannot not have a, yeah. I, a vote. I can't not. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so those are kind of the, you know, options. Now, in patients where we don't do surgery for laryngeal cancer, yeah. chemotherapy, radiation therapy. Yeah. If it were to come back, you know, afterwards, then the old, then we need, then we rely on the surgery. Because once you give radiation therapy once to a partial part of the body, you can't give it again. Sure. Okay. And so I think that's the kind of treatment options, you know, that we have. And when you, know, you right say now. remove my, my vocal box, uh -huh. I would literally not be able to speak. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen those uh, TV commercials with, with like the, the hole here and people with electronic you know, voice. Yeah, they sound like robots. Yeah, that's how it would be after Would I have like a, 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 like a prosthetic on the outside? No, it would just be a hole. You know, sometimes there, okay. there's, there's yeah, these... I can't do that. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. sorry. I just like, I, I don't want that. So yeah. um, I'm, I've already come to terms with the idea of chemo and radiation being uh -huh. in the very near future. Uh-huh. So that's what I'm most comfortable with right now. Yeah.
but what, what the next step here is um, uh, is uh, to have you seen by what's called our tumor board, okay? And that's where we have uh, radiation therapists, medical oncologists, you know, other surgeons like myself. We're going to do examine you, look at your PET scan, CT scan, look at the pictures that Dr. Fine took, look at your biopsy results, and come up with you know, the best you know treatment option. Okay, and then you'll be there as well. I mean, you'll be there for the examination, and um, uh, after we all examine you, then we retire to a conference room and we, you know, talk it all over with, you know, other surgeons and other radiation therapists from different areas here. So there's a, there's probably about, I'd say, you know, twelve to twenty people, you know, who will we'll be looking over, yeah. over this, and then you know we'll be talking about you know, the treatment options of, you know, surgery versus, you know, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, okay? Um, uh, you know, we can't, even, even if the, even if the recommendation is, oh, you know, we recommend, you know, surgery, you know, we can't, you know, force you to do that. You could, you know, you can say that um, uh, there's no way, you know, I'll take my chance with chemo and radiation. And so, um, uh, but I think, you know, from, um, uh, from my experience, you know, kind of dealing, you know, with this cancer, yeah, I haven't found that um, uh, that you know surgery would offer, you know, you know, by, by taking out your voice box. Yeah. I don't know if we can give you a better chance of cure than um, if we did the chemotherapy radiation therapy route. Now, obviously, if I can say we can guarantee 100% cure um, with surgery versus 10% cure with chemotherapy, then obviously we're gonna have to kind of think about that. But if they're equivalent, if if one's not really better than the other. Um, then you know, I even though I'm a you know obviously you know surgeon, yeah, I would say that okay, you know, why take out your voice box when you know it's not giving yeah. you a fair chance? Yeah. Um, I'd heard that uh, because it's an aggressive cancer, it could be um, uh, uh, very responsive to chemo because it, it metabolizes quickly. Is that correct, or is that a misunderstanding of the word aggressive? Yeah, I mean, I think um, uh, that that would imply kind of like a rapidly growing, rapidly, cancer, growing. rapidly okay. growing in size cancer. Sure. And um, uh, it's probably, you know, you know, I wouldn't wait too long, you know, for treatment. But it's probably because, you know, if you start getting symptoms, you know, in October, and you know that's the size, you know, that I saw, you know, that's not that big, you know, of a cancer. Okay. Well, the only reason why um, uh, we're still, I would still. You know, if, if surgery was the way, the only reason why I'd say that you need a this very drastic operation is because of the location, you know, it's in. Okay, you can't, you know, unfortunately, the, the larynx is an area, you, you know, you can take a, a, a portion of the larynx out, you know, up to a certain point, okay? Um, uh, but then if it gets, you know, kind of bigger than that certain point, then it's best just to take the whole thing out, okay? Because then you'll be left with a larynx that doesn't function where food will be going down the wrong way, and you'll have a permanent tracheotomy tube anyway. And so... Um, I can't, I can't, I, I... So we don't want to talk about the tracheotomy tube. Yeah. We're going to pass on talking about that for now. Yeah, I'm okay. so... So, um, uh, so that's why, um, uh, you know, so the... Yeah, to answer the question though, the chemotherapy, I mean, I don't think... I mean, this is an aggressive cancer in the terms that it can spread to other parts of the body. But it's not necessarily a rapidly growing one here. Gotcha. Because based on the size of what I saw from Dr. Fine's pictures, from the onset of symptoms in October, right? You know, it's not like it's, you know, right, gigantic. So I'm sorry, I was taping already when you came in. That I can delete it if you would prefer. We're doing a cancer blog for her. Uh -huh. This is sort of her project uh -huh. that we're doing along with the treatment uh -huh. because she is a millennial with, oh, yeah. That's with fine. cancer. Uh -huh. Do you uh -huh. mind? Yeah, if you. Out my face. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You, yeah. If you just block, like I said, because uh, not 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 because of whatever, but you know, I'm not I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not an attractive person. So. <laughs> no, he's a good looking guy. So that's why. But um, uh, but yeah, I'm I'm totally fine with that. Even yeah. even in our future visits. Yeah. For, because I know that um, uh, you know, you know, diff, you know, different people have different ways of coping sure. and of kind of. You know, helping them you know fight the cancer. Some people go on you know uh, special diets. You know, some people um, uh, you know find you know whatever religion. You know, other people wants to talk about it. You know, via a vlog. And if that's if that's your mechanism of kind of helping with this, I'm totally for it. Okay? I really just, appreciate that. 
Just so, just feel free. As long as you hide my unattractive <laughs> face, just feel free to you. You feel free to um, you know. Record really, I think session. you're quite handsome. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, I guess uh, do you know like what stage it is? Like, is that? Um, I'll have to kind of you know you know look it up. I, the, yeah. the fact that it hasn't it, the fact that it hasn't gone into the other parts of the you know body yeah. it's not a stage four based on you know metastases. Okay, so that, that part that part is good. Yeah. Because the times where I've you know seen this before on the PET scan it has already spread to other parts of the body okay. or into the lymph nodes in the neck. So okay. in that regard we're good. Cool. Okay. That you know it's localized and so again that's why I'm saying you know all of the all of the really you know bad prognostic statistics you know in you know people when I say that you know does it apply to you maybe maybe not because a lot of people it already presented in other parts of the body you yeah. see what I'm saying or spread into the lymph nodes yeah. yours is localized so I think that um, uh, you know, I wouldn't just, you know, because going, going home and reading, you, you Google small cell yeah. carcinoma to larynx, you can see some very dismal numbers. Is that so, typically what, like, people that, well, no, I guess people that chew tobacco get, they typically get cancer in their jaw more. Yeah. But this is, like, for, like, old drinkers and smokers and... This one is. <laughs> like, I just don't understand. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's necessarily linked to you know drinking and everything like that. And yeah, so, I just I, I think like people who were. I think for hard and hung out for, for for your case, it's just unfortunate. Just freakish. Just, okay. yeah, I mean, just, I, just just a mutation in your DNA. Right. Like I mean, I have been like, a smoker in the past. So it's DNA. It could be. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's, probably let's take a quick look here in your voice box. Uh, first, uh, I'll be right back. I'm gonna have my nurse spray so you get all done. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'll take a look at the TV camera. Yep. Uh -huh. Okay, great. All right, I'll be right you back. You guys are gonna love that. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll be right back. We'll be all right, right. thank okay, you. Thanks. All right. His scrubs are on inside out. I like him already. Yeah. 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 Y
dealership, so oh, I have that relationship. Oh, this is so great. <laughs> oh, this is great. I've got this set up in a shot where we can see the, the camera, we can see the TV behind. But, uh, yeah. Can yeah, we hold this way, put the gloves on? Oh, that's right. Okay, close. Kind of dangle in there. I think Dr. Fang debulked the tumor to breathe through your nose. Take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath in. Deep breath in. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Take a deep breath in. Give me an E. E. Take a deep breath in. E. 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 You're good. Take a deep breath in. Good. Good. All right. <coughs> Take a deep breath in. Well, the. Do we have to do the other side? What's that? Are we going on the other? No. Side? Okay. No, because it all goes down to the, it all goes down to the same place. Okay. Well, I think she did it on both sides the last yeah. time. No. Oh, yeah, I think she okay. did for another look. Okay. So, the good news is that it looks like your vocal cords are moving. Okay. Yeah. So, um, again, that means the thing is not so deeply infiltrated where it's like invaded into the muscles of the awesome. vocal cords where, you know, the vocal cords not functioning. Yeah. And so, um, so again, you know, that's, you know, we've talked about what the bad news is. Yeah. And um, uh, um, uh, we talked about kind of the good news is, again, hasn't spread to other parts of the body. Yeah. And um, uh, it's... Um, uh, um, it looks like it hasn't. It's not deeply infiltrated because right now your vocal cords are, you know, moving. Are they touching now? Yeah. Uh huh. I mean, they're. I mean, they're. They're coming together. Yeah. And so, but obviously the surface is still irregular. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you don't have a your normal voice. Sure. Okay. And I mean, to be fair, prior to this, I've always had like a low, scratchy, uh -huh. sexy night radio voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I would say right now how my voice sounds. Mm -hmm. Is like seventy five percent back to what it sounded like. Oh, good. Uh -huh. Since I was like twelve. Yeah, because again, he's <laughs> doctor fine. I think debulked a bunch yeah. of it. So, cool. um, so okay. So the next step. So you're already you've already have a CT scan. You already have a uh, you know you've already had your PET scan. So mm -hmm. I think we're pretty much done. You know, with all the testing. Let me just make sure that um, uh, you're all up to date on your blood test. We gotta do some blood tests. To make sure all your you know, kind of livers and kidneys all in working order before you I did take a blood test two weeks ago and everything came back as normal. Let me see. Oh yeah, perfect. So yeah, there's that. Uh, um, I just need to get, I just want to add a couple more. Sure. I just want to get a blood count. Uh, make sure you're not anemic or anything. And um, uh, Like a week before, I and mean, I mean, maybe this is outside of your jurisdiction, uh -huh. but my OBGYN uh -huh. uh, and I were discussing how uncomfortable my uh, like cramps can be and stuff. Uh -huh. And she told me to skip the placebos and just take my my prescription all the way through. Uh -huh. Would you prefer that during this type of treatment that I do get a period so we can track it, or does that not matter? Oh, I don't think it matters. Okay, cool, great, because yeah. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't think it matters. Okay, so get these two blood tests. Uh, you don't need to be fasting, so you feel good today. You can cool. get it today if you want. And then I'm going to put in the referral uh, for the tumor board. Um, I'm also going to have my cancer nurse, Diane Winchester, to give you a call. Oh, yeah. Me and Diane. Oh, oh, you, oh okay, yeah. perfect. So you've yeah. already talked to her. Okay, yes. perfect. So if you, did she give you her number and everything? Yep, I got it. Okay, so if you need anything, you call Diane. If you need to talk to me, you call Diane. Cool. And um, uh, if for whatever reason, I mean, the tumor board are pretty good about you know, getting a hold of you. Yeah. Uh, but if you don't hear anything, today's what, by Wednesday? And if you don't hear anything by Friday, give Diane a call. Awesome. And then she'll find out what's going on. I will on. tell you that... Uh, the like communication chain prior to me like hey you have cancer uh -huh. <laughs> was so frustrating uh -huh. but diane winchester is like a godsend yeah it is the, like having a liaison basically and that that's that that's what she is yeah and it was, so it's um, really helpful. so yeah so like i said you know any questions or any concerns you call diane cool. you need to get a hold of me you call diane and she'll she'll track me down awesome all right you know
you know, don't go on any you know crazy crash diets or anything like that. Oh, yeah. You know, well, you know, well balanced, you know, meals and common sense diet. You know, should be fine. Uh, okay, I am a pescatarian. Oh. Okay. Cool. Yeah, keep that up then. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. All right, so um, uh, so we'll talk soon if you have any questions. Now, the next thing, if, you know, once you go through the chemotherapy, radiation therapy, right, you don't see me, you know, during your treatments. Um, uh, next time you see me is typically about two months at the end of treatments. Okay. Then you'll come back and see me, and then we kind of take a look to see how you're doing. So eight weeks is kind of like, so I don't know if it says it anywhere you read. My mom died of cancer in February. Uh-huh. <laughs> Life. Uh-huh. Uh, but she had like 16 weeks of chemo and then like months of radiation yeah different yes okay like and it was it. breast cancer yeah it'll so. be typically it'd be eight weeks okay cool it'll be eight weeks and then at three months you know three months after the completion of your treatment yeah then we'll get a and another pet scan make okay, sure cool. it's all gone and then um in terms of a prescription for a prosthetic like a wig do you do that or does no that... typically this type of chemo that you give that we give people don't lose hair oh that is excellent news yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry i'm so excited okay, people don't lose hair oh shit i was so scared about my eyebrows more than anything yeah. okay yeah awesome. all right and then um uh, and then we do regular follow-ups you'll be seeing myself the radiation therapist every few months you know for, for like five years or something yeah, um, cool all right thanks all right. again all right, i really appreciate okay. it thank all right, you good luck to you and then like i said i have one more question uh-huh. before you go um i'm just wondering if uh if we're looking at starting chemo and radiation in like two to four weeks, like oh, yeah. how quick has been? Yeah, that would be. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Once they get you in for the appointment, yeah. it typically takes about two to four weeks to get you know started okay. because they gotta they gotta check your teeth, they gotta program the computers, they gotta I think create a, a mask so your head stays still. <laughs> and so it, it's a, it's it's a bit of a process. Okay, great. Okay. Well, I just wanted to get yeah. an idea of the timeline. And then so. when, when you go to the tumor board and you talk to the radiation therapist, they'll go through the logistics with you, okay. like what the daily routine's gonna be and everything, cool. and with the side effects and things like that. Okay. I'm so excited about the hair. <laughs> All right. Why are you talking about your hair? You have yeah. great hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take care. Pleasure meeting.